Hello, I'm Jeff Kersey, and in this project I'm going to do a painting of Trafalgar Square featuring Nelson's column. I've traced it down onto the paper and put some masking fluid onto the main features, and I'm going to start by mixing some washes for the sky. I've got a large number 16 round brush, and I'm going to start with a thin wash of Naples yellow with a hint of rose madder to give me a soft, almost pinky glow to the sky. I'm really going to wash the brush out so I get rid of all the Naples yellow. And then I'm taking some cobalt blue and adding a little touch of rose madder to that to warm it. And the third wash is a bit of grey, a nice warm grey, cobalt blue and rose madder again. And then I'm greying that with a hint of light red. Then I'm taking a one inch flat brush, making sure that's really charged up with clean water. And I'm going to wet the whole of the sky area behind Nelson's column. Because I've got masking fluid on the whole of the column, I haven't got to paint around it. And I want to run the sky just behind the tops of these buildings, so I'm wetting down behind the buildings as well. I don't want it actually flooded with water, but I want it wet enough to give me quite a long time to paint the sky in. Okay, I'm now picking up the number 16 brush again and starting at the lower part of the sky with that pinky colour mixed from Naples yellow and rose madder. Again, I can just sweep straight across. That's the beauty of masking fluid. It frees you up to paint the background with a large brush and you're not worried about painting around things. Cleaning the brush and then picking up the cobalt blue, that nice warm blue with just a hint of rose madder in it, and bringing that down. And as that mixes in with the pinky glow, we get a nice sort of bluey gray forming that hints at some clouds. And the final color is the gray mixture there's quite a bit of that running behind the column and across sort of the middle of the sky. A little bit at the top as well. Important though to know when to stop with the sky, not overwork it. I'm just going to leave that to dry. So now that the sky is dry, I'm going to mix a range of colours to do all of the background buildings. I'm going to start with raw sienna and burnt sienna, working with a number four brush at the moment. Then I want some more of that light colour from the sky, Naples yellow and rose madder. For the darker areas of the buildings, uh, I'm going to use some of the grey I had in the sky, which is cobalt blue, a hint of rose madder and light red. And that should be enough to get us going on the building. So I'm making sure the brush is really clean and charging it up with the raw sienna and burnt sienna. And just putting in the basic shape of Big Ben. A good point to the brush so I can get the spire fine enough. Now while that's still wet, I'm going to take a little touch of the grey colour and drop that in at the top, let it run down into it, create a bit of variation. And I'm carrying on with more of the same mixture of raw sienna and burnt sienna. Need a touch more burnt sienna in it I think. come right down into this area, not worrying about the shapes of the lions or any of the shapes of the foreground because I've got that masking fluid protecting it. I'm going to touch a bit of grey into there and let that just wander in. It's getting the basics in at first. I'm getting now some of the Naples yellow and rose madder. I'm brushing some of that in. Still working with the number four brush because it's, it's, it's big enough to fill in quite a large area and yet fine enough to keep the detail. A touch of grey into the tops of the buildings. Little suggestions of spires and chimney pots, bits of architectural detail.
work a little more over to the left. I'm adding a touch of water. The top of this building is quite a light colour, so I'm adding a touch of water into that to weaken the paint and get the paint get a bit stronger as I get lower down. This balustrade in the foreground is well protected with masking fluid, so I can just paint right up to that. A little hint of that warm glow again, the raw sienna and burnt sienna. And a touch, a touch of the grey for some of the details of the tops of these buildings. Letting the colours mix and merge at the moment. This isn't, this is like a background for the buildings. It's not the actual detail that will go on after these have dried. A bit more dark into the bottom there. Now while that's drying, I can carry on and work over to the right hand side. Repeating the same sort of process with the same three colours. There's a London bus passing by there, so I'm just avoiding that. A little bit of the grey going in. letting them mix and merge on the paper to give me a sort of loose background. Bringing that right down to the masking fluid behind the lions and beyond the road. Um, I think perhaps a little bit more grey behind the bus. Maybe a touch more grey into this dome. And I think just a hint of that warmth again, a bit of reflected light using that raw sienna and burnt sienna. Touch of grey into the roof. It's all about just looking at your reference material and making observations. Now that needs a little time to dry. So just to develop further the background buildings, I've got a number two brush, a good fine point to it. I've got some grey again, this time it's cobalt blue, a little bit of light red, slightly stronger than the previous grey. And I've got to be careful here that I don't try to paint every little detail too carefully. It's about building up that feeling of the distant buildings. And it's about suggesting detail rather than being too literal. So I'm starting on the left, putting in some of these ridges around the building, which also describe the curve to the viewer. If you do these lines rapidly, your hand is less likely to wobble. It's, it's easier to get a nice, neat line. Now with the same grey mixture, let's put in some little windows. And it's as much a suggestion of windows, really. Fine point to the brush really does help when you're suggesting little details like window frames, you don't so much paint it as just leave a little space that suggests it and then fill in some more dark underneath. And this grey shouldn't be too strong, it's sort of just a tone darker than the greys used in the first stage. The windows, as we come round the bend of the building, become narrower, you see less of them. And it's just more of the same working my way down. Every now and again you've got to charge the brush up because if you try to make the paint go too far, and you run out halfway through a window, it's much harder to carry on where you're left off. There's one more row on here. 